If you have PCOS, do you have to do IVF to have a baby? I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people conceive with PCOS for years. I love educating. I'm an author. I'm a content creator. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram. And here I get to do long form videos where I really get to educate. And I'm so happy that you're here. Be sure and subscribe to my channel so you get my weekly videos. PCOS impacts one in 10 reproductive age women. It can often be associated with infertility due to irregular ovulation and some other hormonal changes. But the question is, if you have PCOS, do you have to do IVF in order to have a baby? And the answer is no, not necessarily. I mean, of course, there are people who have PCOS and need, need to do IVF for other reasons. But just a sole diagnosis of PCOS does not mean that you need IVF to have a baby. Let me explain. In this video, we're going to do number one, a quick review of PCOS. Number two, we're going to talk about fertility treatment options for people with PCOS. Number three, if you do IVF there's, and you've got PCOS, there's some things that you should know. And number four, I'm going to leave you with some questions to ask your doctor. So let's get started. Topic number one, what is PCOS? Well, I've got a whole video here in my PCOS playlist on YouTube where you can learn exactly what it is. But a quick reminder, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome is a common and complex hormonal condition impacting one in 10 reproductive age women. You need two out of three things to get the diagnosis, including irregular and unpredictable ovulation, leading to irregular and unpredictable menstrual cycles. Number two, evidence of high androgens, either clinically with acne or male pattern hair growth or laboratory, like elevated testosterone and other male hormones. And the third criteria is PCOS appearing ovaries on ultrasound, either lots and lots or above average numbers of antral follicles, little resting follicles in your ovaries or enlarged ovaries on ultrasound. So I go into detail about this diagnostic criteria, which is called the Rotterdam criteria in my PCOS playlist videos, but I wanted to make sure you have a little bit of a reminder. And so often when people get the diagnosis of PCOS, the very next thing that their provider says is, and you're going to be infertile. <laughs> Um, and people kind of hang on to that. And it's not necessarily true. There are people with PCOS that conceive easily, but I do think that the irregular ovulation and irregular cycles can make it more difficult to time trying or take longer to time trying. But so often people have it in their head. PCOS equals infertility. IVF is the most high tech and highest chance of success. If I have PCOS, I must have to do IVF to have a baby. And that is just not true. Topic number two, what are the fertility treatment options? In this video, I'm really focusing on the medical treatment of people with PCOS that are trying to have a baby. I do have another video here that's five tips to getting pregnant if you've got PCOS. In that video, I'm talking about lifestyle optimization, some supplements that might help, and some other non-fertility medicine driven treatment to try to get you to ovulate regularly, focus on health, and then you might conceive without intervention. But here we're talking about actually fertility treatment to help somebody conceive. So if you've got PCOS, first of all, you've got to make sure you've got the right diagnosis because there's other reasons that people can have irregular ovulation. And number two, you should do a full fertility evaluation. Don't assume that if one person in the couple has PCOS, that that is the only fertility issue. You should do a semen analysis, make sure that there's sperm. You should do anatomy checkup, make sure there, you know, fibroids, not all fibroids impact fertility, but you should do a fertility checkup. And I think you should make sure the fallopian tubes are open. You should do an HSG or hysterosalpingogram. I had one patient, I'll never forget, this is a about 12 years ago, honestly, that she came to me. She'd been diagnosed with PCOS and she had been doing Clomid every single month for almost two years with her primary doctor. And she wasn't getting pregnant. She was finally ready to see a fertility specialist. Like we should do a hysterosalpingogram. She had no risk factors for blocked fallopian tubes, but oh my goodness, she had blocked fallopian tubes. And she turned to me and she's like, I have just wasted two years of my life that I could have been a mom. And that is so heartbreaking. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do it right away, but just don't forget the basics of fertility testing. Are there sperm? Are there eggs? Are the fallopian tubes open? Is the anatomy okay? So make sure you've got the right diagnosis. Make sure you do a good fertility check. Now, you have PCOS, you're having irregular ovulation. What do you do? Low-tech treatment to help you ovulate or IVF? A reason to go to IVF right away 
no matter if you have PCOS or not. If you've got blocked fallopian tubes, that's why it was invented. It's a way to bypass fallopian tubes. Another reason could be a severe male factor, such low sperm count that you don't even have enough sperm to conceive with low tech treatment like IUI. But if you've got sperm, anatomy is okay, and all it is is irregular ovulation, you really could consider just focusing on the ovulation. And there are some treatments that you could use to help you ovulate. You can use either pills or shots to help with that process. So the pills that are available are either Clomiphene or the brand name is Clomid or Letrozole and the brand name is Famara. Both of these are pills that you take at the beginning of your cycle to help your pituitary gland make more follicle stimulating hormone to help with the first half of the cycle to help recruit and mature an egg so it's ready to ovulate. When it's ready to ovulate, it could ovulate on its own, but sometimes I offer to my patients doing ultrasounds to kind of see that follicle get bigger and bigger and you know the egg inside is ready and mature. Look at the uterine lining to make sure that's ready for implantation. And when everything's ready, you can actually give a medication called a trigger that will trigger ovulation. And you could time intercourse. You could do an intrauterine insemination. If you can just really time sperm exposure to ovulation, sometimes that's all that people need with PCOS. So very often we're starting out simple and trying to help with ovulation. Sometimes we'll still, of course, counsel about the lifestyle optimization. We'll talk about supplements. We'll talk about considering metformin. That's that insulin sensitizing medication that can help with hormone balance and help with recruitment. Not everybody responds to metformin. Not everybody needs it, but it's just those are the kind of things. But truly to get you to ovulate, you can use these pills. The other medication that you can use is to actually give follicle stimulating hormone directly. So the pills, remember, they indirectly help you make more follicle stimulating hormone. Well, you could also take that directly in the form of shots. So when you're trying to compare whether to use pills to help with ovulation or shots, there's some things to think about. First of all, the pills are significantly less expensive. Shots are very expensive. They're actually the same medication you use to stimulate your ovaries when you're doing IVF and it's shots. So that's not so fun. But the other thing is you have a much higher chance of recruiting a lot of follicles if you use the shots. I don't know if you remember the reality TV show, Me and Kate Plus Eight. This is a young couple that shared that they had twins, they wanted one more baby, and the next time they get pregnant, they had six sex tuplets. Now, everybody assumed that the couple did IVF and they transferred way too many embryos, but that's actually not the case. Kate had PCOS and she ovulated way too many eggs and that's how they ended up with six. So just be very conscious of number of follicles that are coming forward and talk to your doctor about what's right for you. But when my patients with PCOS were trying to stick with the oral medications like Clomid or Letrozole because there's a lower chance of ovulating too many eggs. Third topic, if you have PCOS and you decide to do IVF for any reason, you are going to be at a higher chance of a risk of IVF called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. And it is very important to talk to your doctor about strategies to decrease the risk of this happening when you do your egg retrieval. I have a whole video here on it, but basically people with PCOS just have a lot of eggs that are up for grabs. That's why that one of the diagnostic criteria is a high antral follicle count. That's why people with PCOS often have a higher than average AMH or anti-malarian hormone than other people. They just got lots of eggs. And that means that they're at risk of overstimulating. Average egg number for retrieval and somebody with IVF just very much in general is about 10 to 15, but somebody with PCOS can get 20, 30, 40, 50. You have to be very, very careful. Nobody has that many good eggs. That might sound great, but it's not. And people feel very bloated, very full. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is no joke. And I really encourage you to watch my two videos here on OHSS, especially if you've got PCOS and you're thinking about doing IVF. You are at higher risk of this and it's going to be okay if you have great communication with your doctor and you guys used strategies to watch closely so you have an excellent outcome, but without the side effects. I don't want to make you nervous. If you've got PCOS, IVF can be an amazing treatment for you, but you do need to work with your doctor and uh, have strategies to decrease your risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome so you can have an excellent outcome for your cycle, but not 
feel so bad. The fourth topic, what questions should you ask your doctor if you've got PCOS, you think you need fertility treatment, and you are trying to figure out which path is right for you? I've got six questions for you. Question number one, what test do you recommend for me? And I would include in this question, are you sure that I have a diagnosis of PCOS? Have we ruled out any other reason for irregular ovulation or the other symptoms that I'm having? Number two, ask about other tests, fertility checkup. Don't allow your provider and yourself to get so laser focused in on PCOS that you forget the basics of making sure the female anatomy is okay, the sperm count is okay. Question number three, ask about non-prescription medication treatment for PCOS. You know, lifestyle optimization, referral to a registered dietitian to go over nutrition optimization, any supplements that might be recommended. It's good to ask about big picture. Question number four, ask about the medical treatments for ovulation induction and intrauterine insemination and IVF and why your provider would recommend one path for you over the other. Question number five, if IVF is recommended as a first-line treatment, ask why and be sure to ask about any risks that might be associated with having PCOS and doing IVF. Question number six, ask for a long-term plan. Whatever you decide to do, whatever is right for you, whether it is ovulation induction, intrauterine insemination, or IVF, it's really nice to kind of say, all right, doctor, if this doesn't work the first couple of tries, what would be our next plan? It's really nice to have a goal. It doesn't mean that you have to stick to it. It's always important to regroup, but it's nice to think about the big picture. I hope you learned something today. I was here to answer a very specific question. If you've got PCOS, you do not necessarily have to do IVF to have a baby. There are wonderful reasons to do IVF and a lot of people with PCOS do do IVF, but I just wanted to be very clear that it is not your only option most of the time. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have, other topics that you want me to cover. Subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly video. And as always, sending you love, luck, and pineapples.